Hi, my name is Tegan. And my name is Liam. And we are two of the four young filmmakers in Plymouth. In this film, we wanted to explore what young people thought of their communities and how well they are supported. Yeah, I guess I do interact with the community a fair amount. You know, I see a lot of people at the game store. I think it's more work apart from the D&D &D bit, which is more for fun. <laughs> Yeah, I think I totally engage with my community. There's a few communities in particular that I really feel like I have a strong sense of belonging to. Um, there's communities that the theatre will create. Um, I'm part of one called The Lab, and it's been a really great way, not only of helping further my career prospects and what I feel like I can do, but confidence building. On a wider city-wide scale, I'd say no, there's not much that I would do, say like projects to support, I don't know, for example, homeless people in the city or anything like that. I've done things like that in the past, like just when they've come through my education and they ask you to help out. But most of the things that I engage with, I'd say are like the social cultures of the people I hang around with. I don't do much on a wider scale for anyone. Uh, well, I started skating when I came to uni. Got more established in the skating community here, like civic area, and knowing I know more Plymouth locals now from being in it. Yeah, I guess that's one way I've been in community. I feel like I engage in the way that it's in my schedule, and I make sure to go and interact with my communities on a weekly basis. I got into skateboarding ages ago, and yeah, I just started like volunteering, and then. Eventually, just yeah, I just got hired basically. I think I somewhat engage in my community. Considering my communities are mainly online, there's not much to really engage in besides the odd tweet or something here and there. I am part of the LGBT community as well, but there's not much about that. So different classes are run by Exim. I go and teach and help out. Um, like I do a primary school session. I don't think if I had Exim, I wouldn't really have anything else to do or go to really. Growing up, I was very sheltered. Um, I didn't really like going out. I was scared of going out, scared of how I was perceived, scared of how, scared of how my interests would be perceived. Um, a lot of that changed going into um, my late teens, especially when I went, went to university. It, that was a real eye-opener that you didn't have to be a certain way or be like cool to feel belonging or feel like you were worth time of others, especially growing up, it's very self-defeating. You know, I, I can't do this. I'll, I'll get rejected from doing this. I won't be able to do this because of X, Y, Z. And putting myself out there, that first step, each step comes easier. As I started to get into my career, I thought that coming out to university, things would start to click, but I just didn't really find the I was amazingly happy as a whole, so I started looking out to what could be supplementing that. And something I did when I was younger was I worked with the Sea Cadet Corps a lot and did a fair amount of volunteering through that. And it seemed a lot more balanced, so I thought I'd reach out and try and do some more volunteering um, to give back a little bit and also to try and progress myself a little bit too. It sounds sad saying it out loud, but I suppose as I've gotten to 20, I'm less engaged now than I would have been at, say, 17, 18. I try to focus more on my personal things, as you say, about developing your identity, knowing who you are. When you're an adult, part of being your own person is managing your own negative emotions and being your own boss with them. And I feel like as I've gotten older, put more time into that, I've been less engaged with other people. Say my job asked me to do something to help a community, and you know, people around me were like quite supportive of the idea, then I guess I'd be a lot more inclined to do it. A lot of people are pretty skint. Like a lot of people I know don't have much money. And so I suppose they put more time into their own stresses than helping a community because they feel like they aren't meeting their own needs. People were more, felt more well off or safe with their financial things in their own lives. They'd be more inclined to then go and help people that have less. I mean, I interact a lot more with the community now than I saw them did before. <laughs> I didn't really. <laughs> I'm very um, introverted, so online is where I'm more comfortable, where I'm by myself, using my own energy to gain energy to actually go out. Currently, within the LGBTQIA plus community, 
the only places where we can go and be social is nightlife related places such as clubs and pubs which doesn't really affect me much because I don't like the nightlife. Most people just go get drunk or do drugs and just be hyper and like listening to loud music which is not something I do. So eh, pretty much everything that sells a place for most queer people is the complete opposite for me. And internal homophobia is a big thing as well and people don't know how to overcome that so if there were situations where people could overcome stuff like that I'm sure it would be helpful but yeah. I was a bit, I was quite a shy kid and I didn't really like doing stuff out of my comfort zone so I just stuck to what felt right for me but growing up I became a lot more confident doing things with X and made me more confident to where I'd go and do different sessions and try things that I wouldn't do when I was younger. I mean I'm more confident than I was, <laughs> better at talking to people Still can't make eye contact that easily. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it, it's been good. It's good. You can interact with people more online than in real life, in my opinion. <laughs> it's helped my growth to just like be more me because it's kind of like who I was online was the real me and it got to a point where I was so com comfortable and confident with doing it that it just bled into my normal everyday life. I'm definitely a lot more resilient in a sense. Like, um, I'll, I'll, it helps me be able to get through stuff easier from where I used to feel feel so like isolated and feel like I didn't really have anyone now being in a bigger community doing different things has made me feel a lot more that I have people there if needed and it's made me feel a lot more resilient in the sense I can get through stuff. The main thing I've gotten out of engaging in the communities I'm engaged with is growth not just in confidence not just in learning not just in my own self-esteem but in what I can see myself doing. So when I first started working here, I was very, I guess, shy a lot more than I am now. And it's, yeah, I've just, I guess, grown and developed skills and just feel more comfortable, like with just like talking to people. Everyone really should be helping people to feel a lot more confident. Everyone should be able to help each other in the sense, like, we should all be able to come together as one big community and help each other and make each other feel like confident and being able to do stuff that they want to do without being judged or anything. I think the best person to be able to support people in Plymouth would be organisations who have direct contact with the communities and I suppose leading up from that level up to the council. I know it's a pretty standard answer saying the council but the council does have the links and ties with all of the local organisations and communities and so it makes sense to me that more effort needs to be put in to make those resources instantly available to people who would like to source them. Regardless of how much support you provide I feel like it can always be signposted better. A lot of the resources and a lot of the uh, opportunities that I could have benefited from I have either come across them too late or I n never knew about them in the first place or they, they present in such a way that they are intimidating to approach. I still have that sensation of trepidation going towards something. I do feel like a lot of opportunities and support for young people can be better signposted. I think what Plymouth could do in order to like allow people to be more free is just show that they um, care and they see us and they respect us because just putting a rainbow flag during a month or during a week is not the same as actively trying to help the, that community and giving more visibility towards queer people could help us be more accepted in society in general which is not something that I've seen Plymouth do as much, or at all, even sometimes. If I would give myself advice, it would be try more and just be more of yourself. So advice I'll give to myself, just be, try to be a bit more outgoing. Don't ever stop doing what you want to do. Just try to relax a bit more. Mental health is not a joke. Uh, it can cause a lot more issues than just with yourself, so get help. I would say, yeah, go outside more. I think I, I definitely let my anxiety not let me do things all the time. I'd say just do it. Yeah, just 
do the things you want because I didn't when I was growing up. Just be more yourself. Don't be as scared to be openly queer because even if others don't particularly enjoy that side of you, they're either going to have to deal with it or be gone. Don't try and think too hard about if what you're going to do will make the impact you want it to. If you're unsure, give it a go and reevaluate as you go. Because getting started is the hardest step. So once you get started, just keep rolling. To keep staying confident and be able to push through things and to be there for um, help improve people's mental health, mental well-being, and don't give up on it. Keep on going. If I were to give myself advice, it would be to look at the progress you have made. And that isn't a case of feeling cocky or bigging yourself up or becoming really overconfident in who you are, but just accepting that any progress is great progress. Yeah.